Welcome back to another installment of reviewing your letterbox profiles. But today, there's a twist. Today's twist is not going to be looking at your entire profile. That means your watch list, your recently watched, your top four, your likes. We're not gonna be looking at any of that. Today, I am going to be watching your letterbox top four. If you know anything about letterbox and you have looked at anyone's letterbox profile, you know the top four means everything. It's basically, movie bible. It's basically opening up your butthole for everyone to see. This letterbox top four is everything we want to know about you. If you do not encompass everything that the audience wants to know in your letterbox top four, then what the fuck are you doing? It can't just be your favorites. It can't just be what you like. It has to tell me something about you. It has to tell me everything about you. And it also has to be good and it also has to be pretentious in some way. So I know that you actually do like movies, but it also has to be funny enough and charming enough that I know you're not a film bro, but then it also has to have the juxtaposition of great acting and bad acting and be ironic and be funny, but also be good and also tell me that you love me. It has to do all of that within just four movies. Now that's a lot. And I'm someone who doesn't change my letterbox top four very often. And when I do, it's a very big deal. Some people change their letterbox top four every single week. I think there is no correct way to do a letterbox top four. I think it's just the top four movies that you want to put on there. And I wanted to get to know you guys. I wanted to see what these movies said about you. I wanted to see if I could tell the type of person you are from your letterbox top four. So I gathered some of my favorite profiles and I watched all your letterbox top four movies. So this letterbox top four we're gonna be looking at is Nelly's, AKA blood underscore moon underscore lit. Now they said they feel like this is an odd combo, which to me, I feel like this is the most self-explanatory top four to ever exist. And you might be thinking that Hereditary is an outlier within this top four, that Hereditary doesn't fit the line of the others, right? We have Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Edge of 17, and Little Miss Sunshine, which are very familiar, they're very family-based coming of age movies centering daughters growing up and uh, not knowing who they are and feeling like it is impossible to be who they are and express themselves. And then you have hereditary and you're thinking hereditary does not fall under those categories when in reality it does. You can either say it is about the daughter as well, but I think it more lies within the son. I think the son has this very lost identity. They have this very torn family going through this hardship. It just is under the guise of horror. And I think that's where we kind of get that, oh, this is odd because it is the one that is not a dramedy, but hereditary is just the same. If everything everywhere all at once is in your top four, it just means you 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 like something weird, but you don't wanna be too weird. And by it's too weird, I don't mean that everything everywhere all at once is not weird. It is just the most popular weird, right? It's the weird that is super popular. Anyone who has everything everywhere all at once in their top four, I understand you, I appreciate you, and you probably have some sort of issue with your mother. I see you. The Edge of Seventeen also is valid in my opinion. I think this and Lady Bird have a very similar energy in when I see people pick them. When I see people pick The Edge of Seventeen or Lady Bird, I can see that they feel like, maybe I'm like hyperanalyzing, but that's the whole point of this video is hyperanalyze. That's why I'm watching your top four. If I see The Edge of Seventeen in your top four, I'm gonna think that you, feel like the unlikable protagonist. I'm gonna think that you go through life thinking you're the unlikable protagonist of your own story.
Anyone who has Little Miss Sunshine in your top four is automatically um, my best friend in the entire world. I've never seen anyone better than that. Like if you have Little Miss Sunshine in your top four, that means you understand true love. It means you understand loss. It means you uh, can appreciate the darkness within comedy without just being compl a complete dick. I think that Little Miss Sunshine is actually a fairly dark comedy um, in the subjects that it chooses to talk about. And that's the kind of dark comedy that I like. Personally, I don't find dark comedy that is uh, just offensive and actually so brutally mean to be dark comedy. I think that Little Miss Sunshine actually encapsulates that it's about about all these people feeling like they are losers within their lives. It's about a, a dad who is, is, is traumatizing his kids by the way he tells them to be winners. It's about a, a teenage boy losing his one passion that he has dreamed about doing. It is about a little girl who is ch challenged with the fact that her, her one mentor passed away on her way to her competition and dealing with what's left is her dad's unattainable standards. It's about a mother who is having a failed marriage. It's about a man who tried to kill himself because the love of his life found someone else. Little Miss Sunshine is the best movie ever. And you're probably thinking, Trin, it's not in your top four, but it is in my top five. It is in my top five, it's just not in my top four. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do about that? Huh? You're not gonna do shit. <laughs> Hereditary is kind of becoming a more basic pick in my opinion. Granted, I don't like really calling any favorite movie basic, but when people say Hereditary, it doesn't tell me much about them because everyone likes Hereditary, right? Maybe that's me being a little bit naive and maybe the certain circles that I run in uh, do like Hereditary and do love them. But Hereditary for me, if that's in your top four, I'm thinking, okay, you like horror, but how far does this horror genre extend for you? And a lot of people say that Hereditary is the scariest movie they've seen. And for someone who is scared, self-proclaimed self girl who's scared of everything, Hereditary was not the scariest movie I've watched. Granted, I was, bat I was very scared when I watched it. I do not want anyone thinking that I am trying to lie and say that I was not scared. I was very scared when I watched it, but it is not the scariest movie I've ever seen. And it is a horror pick that I know you like horror, but I don't know how much you like horror because a lot of people that like Hereditary don't like horror, if that makes any sense. But everyone who likes horror likes Hereditary. So that's where I get into this weird juxtaposition. For me, this just seems like you really have issues with your family and this is not me therapizing. For me, this top four really says about you is that you you love your family, but you, you do struggle with connecting with them. Or maybe you just like seeing weird father-daughter dynamics. I don't know. I don't know. I can't have all the answers, even though this video is supposed to be me having all the answers. Next profile we are going to be looking at is none other than my good friend, Cinema Joe. I've actually been on Cinema Joe's House of Cinema podcast, and he is a very, very big TikToker. He does film reviews, he does ranking videos, he is amazing, he has an amazing podcast. It's time for us to look at his letterbox. Cinema Joe now has Chunking Express, The Fly, Whisper of the Heart, and Nope. Previously, like literally like two days ago, it was Chunking Express, The Fly, Whisper of the Heart, and John Wick 4. Granted, Nope doesn't change much because I have seen Nope, but Prior to this, I had seen none of these films. The first film that I was to watch off of Cinema Joe's profile was Whisper of the Heart. I had never seen this movie before I came across Cinema Joe's 
profile. The first film that I watched from Cinema Joe's profile was Whisper of the Heart, and I had never watched this movie up until I saw Joe's profile. Obviously, I've seen it around, it's been on the watch list, but this movie quite literally changed my life. I was not expecting it to uh, shake my world so badly. I mean, I kind of figured if like Joe put it in his top four, it kind of meant a lot. Uh, and it probably wasn't just like a meaningless movie to put in your top four. When I was watching it, it encompassed like youth and friendship and really like hope for all that is to come to you, right? I think it's like the contrast of, I mean, if you haven't seen the movie, go watch the movie, but it's a contrast between someone who knows exactly what they want and it is going to do whatever it takes to get what they want and someone who spends a lot of their time wandering and lives their life in fear of not being able to be good at their dreams while we have the other person that has no fear. The only fear that they have is not being able to do their dreams. I saw a review that said this movie feels like ribs by Lord and that's like very good way to wrap this movie up. It is so gorgeous, vivid colors, just like a delectable meal for your eyes. Like it is, every frame is a masterpiece in my opinion. And I think that if this film is in your top four, it means you wanna find more in life. I think that it, I think that you probably relate to the feeling of being lost and in search of finding your dreams. I think that it also encompasses like the roadblocks in your life, which are the insecurities of figuring out new things and trying new things and the fear of failing. And I think that this movie gives the comfort in what really scares you about chasing your dreams, which is your own insecurities. I gave this film a five out of five stars when I watched it. I would definitely watch it again and recommend it to other people. I think having this in your top four and people being like, oh, I'm gonna watch it because it's in their top four. I think it is like the perfect like everyone's gonna love this movie. You can't watch Whisper of the Heart and not like it. It's like a guaranteed, like almost even like a tearjerker. It is fun, it is funny, it's got a lot of personality. I feel like it's like a no fail top four pick. What was John Wick 4 is now nope, but I watched John Wick 4 in preparation for this video and I watched it even though I had never seen a John Wick movie prior to this video. So I was completely lost because no one, no one wanted to tell me that John Wick had the most intense lore of all time. They are all reference characters. They are all characters from like thousands of years ago or like, not thousands of years ago, but they're all characters that connect to a previous character. And granted, my own fault, but I didn't have time to watch all the John Wick movies before this move. But I didn't have all the time in the world to watch all four John Wick movies in preparation just for one of them to be on his top four. But no, this is not in his top four anymore. It is, nope. Which if nope is in your top four, this is a really good one to have in your top four. When people say nope is their favorite Jordan Peele movie, I get really excited because nope is my favorite. Well, it's between that or get out. There's only three. But when, when nope came out and people started saying it was their favorite Jordan Peele movie, it got me really excited because I have such a big love for this movie. If you wanna see all my opinions on nope, I have an entire video on all the Jordan Peele movies, but if it is in your top four, it's very interesting to me because a lot of people when talking about Jordan Peele always say get out is their favorite movie of his. And to say that nope is, I don't know if Joe is saying this, but I'm assuming if it's in his top four, that means that nope is his favorite favorite, I think it tells a lot about you. I think it is um, kind of an underdog pick of Jordan Peele. Nope was my favorite movie of 2022. It was just phenomenal. I watch it all the time. I think it is a brilliant piece of media. I think if it is in your top four, I think you're really cool. Like, I can't say anything else, but I think you're really cool. And if someone has Nope in their top four and they are willing to talk to me about Nope, um, that means everything to me. That does mean everything to me. And you know, I get why Joe changed out John Wick 4 for Nope, because Nope is better than John Wick 4. There I said it. Oh, there I said it. You're gonna handcuff me because I said Nope is better than John Wick 4? 
Go for it. Next, Joe has the fly in his top four. This is the most Joe answer ever. Of course, Joe has the fly in his top four. It just makes sense that Joe would put a very old horror movie in his top four. The fly was a little gross for me. It, it, I had to say it, it's a little gross for me. So, sue me, sorry. I can't help but say it was a little gross to me. Great movie. Great love story. That's kind of nasty to watch. I gotta be, I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, great effects. The makeup, amazing. I wanted to throw up watching this movie though. Oh, it was so ugly. Oh my God. Just nasty. Goo everywhere. Not for me, but maybe for you. But not for me. If this is in your top four, I understand because it's a very classic with an horror and it is this, this uh, I would say a, a pioneer for a lot of horror movies, but oh my God, it is gross. And last but not least on Joe's top four, we have Chunking Express. Yeah, if this is in your top four, I get it. It's a fantastic movie. Is it like all vibes, no plot? A little bit. I would say it's a little bit, right? A little bit of all vibes, no plot. But then you get a little bit of plot. It's like they kind of like, I feel like they kind of like carrot you, like with like the, they give you little bits of carrots throughout the movie, right? Like vibes, vibes, vibes. A little bit of plot to keep you with me. And then vibes, vibes, vibes. A little bit more plot to keep you with me. And I mean, I don't really like getting played with a movie like that, but Chunking Express is like one, it is becoming very mainstream. And I feel like it kind of has been mainstream for a few years. Like if you say Chunking Express, it's not gonna be that like crazy that like a lot of people know it. Um, I think this was also a very big movie for people to get into Asian cinema and Chinese cinema specifically uh, that wasn't uh, clouded by this, uh, what's it called? This stereotype of like dramas and soap operas within Asian countries. I think Chungking Express really opened uh, America's point of view to see China as like a very, very, capable country of making really good films and i think that um not that everyone was against them i'm just saying that like at least for me this opened the gate for a lot of people to start enjoying uh asian cinema and like that opens an entire world right if this movie is in your top four it definitely means you're either like going through deep relationship issues or have just gone through them um and you love getting the spins. I think you do love getting the spins because some of the action sequences where our main girl is running away from people, I almost threw up. I almost actually threw up because I was so, like my eyes could not keep up and I didn't have my glasses on either. So I just had to watch a blurry screen and like try not to throw up. Try not to throw up challenge. That's the one con about this movie. I know it's a stylistic choice. I know it's supposed to be very cool and very artsy and I love it. And I love it that it almost made me throw up, but simply I cannot watch it again due to that fact. I will have to skip over those parts. Thank you very much. Cinema Joe, um, what can I say? Your top four basically tells me, what does it tell me? I mean, Whisper of the Heart and Chungking Express kind of give me this like lost spirit, or, whereas The Fly and Nope give this like very outward look on uh, uh, humanity almost. So maybe like your top four, if like half of it's giving like, he, uh, uh, the problem with humanity versus uh, being a lost spirit and finding your one, I think that like maybe it's finding the humanity within your soulmate. I just made that up. That was all just coming out of my mouth. I did not think that through at all. I think it's great. Next up is Amelia. Amelia has one repeater that we've already seen. Amelia also has Whisper of the Heart. So I'm not gonna go in depth about Whisper of the Heart again. We already know if it's in your top four, you're kind of lost, you're kind of like chasing your dreams, you're kind of crazy. And that also, that 
also segues me into Lady Bird, which Lady Bird also gives a similar vibe to Edge of Seventeen, which I mentioned earlier. Lady Bird in your top four. Lady Bird in your top four is very standard. I think for a lot of young, I think anyone under the age of 23 choosing Lady Bird to be in your top four makes complete sense. It is this sense of nostalgia that you get from this film, even if you weren't a teenager in the early 2000s, was exciting. Lady Bird, when it came out, was very exciting for the audience. It was very exciting to see a modern coming of age that created this to many people, unlikable protagonists, but to also another group of people was this relatable figure that like, oh my God, that is, you are speaking how I feel. And everyone looks at me crazy, like they look at Lady Bird. It is this like stable movie. It's, it's a classic already. And I can't wait for like 10 years to come or more and like be able to show this to like my kids and being able to show Lady Bird to people, to young adults. I think it's gonna be this like very pivotal moment. I feel like Lady Bird is going to be what like Breakfast Club was for us growing up. The only thing is about Lady Bird is it doesn't tell me so much about you because it is a popular movie, right? Same goes for Hereditary. When it's super popular, when a movie that is super popular is in your top four, it leaves me kind of a little less room to know exactly because more popular, the more diverse uh, the the audience is for, at least in my opinion. I think that can also uh, go different ways because some really popular movies have a very, very uh, homogenous audience. But for Lady Bird, I think it kind of tells me a little less because I see so many people with it in their top four that I kind of like lose my gauge on like, who are you? You could be a 17 year old girl struggling with your identity and wanting to get out of your small town, you could also be a 20 year old man that wears a pearl necklace trying to manipulate girls. And you say Lady Bird is your favorite film so you can get with girls. See, the, the, the men ruin everything. It's like we can't have a fucking goddamn thing. And the same thing with Barbie. It's like now if Barbie's in your top four, like now I don't know if you're like a girl wanting to be seen or a man trying to make my top four or your mojo dojo casa house. I don't know, I, I am scared. And in, in the epidemic of, of sassy men, I am I'm scared for my life on Letterboxd. I'm actually scared. I'm scared of my life for men realizing that they can say certain movies are their favorite and women will believe that they are some type of way because I have fallen into the trap. I've fallen into the trap. I'm not saying that girls are dumb and that like we hear mo feminist movie boy likes and we just go, mm. but I'm saying that there's, there's men out there who, who play on this. They know the certain movies that'll get you to be like, oh, oh, he likes this movie? Oh, like I thought men hated this movie. Like they're saying they like Gone Girl. They're saying they like Barbie. They're saying they like Black Swan and Midsommar. Like they're saying all of it and they're seeping under our skins. And ladies, we have to stand tall in this moment. In this moment, we have to stand tall because especially with the Barbie coming out, um, it's, you know, men will do anything and I'm scared of them. I'm really, I really am. That was a very long tangent for Lady Bird. Um, love Lady Bird, that's great, it's in your top four. Shrek 2. Shrek 2 really is one of the very few American animated films that is pretty much indestructible. It is invincible to all and any criticism. It is this perfect film to many, many people. It is something that you just like cannot penetrate. It has this uh, just cult following that just loves it so much. But if you have Shrek 2 in your top four, for me, it was, it, it tells me that you like to giggle, but only if it's great, right? You're not just giggling at everything. 
you, you put Shrek 2 in your top four for a reason. And, and when watching this movie, I think that like a lot of people would put it in their top four if they didn't want, uh, I think a lot more people will put Shrek 2 in their top four if it had a more aesthetically pleasing poster. Sorry, like I just think they would. I think that if it had a more aesthetically pleasing poster, so many people would put Shrek 2 in their top four. And what do we have here? Twilight. <laughs> wearing a Twilight shirt today. We all know that I love Twilight. It, it is not really something that I am fearing to say, but all I have to say is that if, if Twilight is in your top four, I think you're stronger than the Marines because there is nothing worse than being a teenage girl and openly admitting to being a Twilight fan on Letterboxd in the year 2023. I think it is actually so horrid to be in on Letterboxd and have a have a review get traction and then realize that oh there are a lot of men that comment on letterbox reviews it's honestly really heartbreaking to be an active twilight fan on letterbox in 2023 and i give my props to everyone who openly puts any twilight film in their top four and Props to all the Eclipse stands who do put Eclipse in their top four, because I don't I can't even defend that. Or Breaking Dawn Part One. Ooh, I can't I can't say anything about that. But right now Amelia has two blockbusters. I, I would say Twilight is a blockbuster. I think it wasn't really intended to be, but it can't became one. Um and then you got Lady Bird and Whisper of the Heart, which are a little bit more um, secluded. They're a little bit uh, more indie, even though I do think Lady Bird has the same indie intention that Twilight has, but it became so much bigger than that. So I guess the really only blockbuster hit in here that was intended to be a blockbuster hit is Shrek. Like the they were the makers of Shrek weren't making Shrek thinking it was gonna be an indie hit. This top four really screams like giving my inner child like the biggest, fattest, warmest hug ever, and saying like. I love you and you'll be okay. Cause like all of this is just like speaking to your inner child. And and, and that is that is wonderful. And watching your letterbox top four uh, definitely gave a sense of comfort to me. So there we have it. We did three letterbox accounts where I watched all your letterbox top four. I kind of kept it a little bit easy for this time because I wanted to test how this went for you guys. I didn't want to do anything too crazy. I wanted to see your guys' thoughts on this video before I continue on with other letterbox profiles. I think we could do a lot of different themes with this series. We could do film bro edition. We could do uh, film girl edition. We could do celebrities. Letterbox has an entire series in their interviews for the red carpet of asking celebrities their top four movies. So I hope you guys enjoy the different style of content that I'm doing. I'll be having some older movie commentaries coming out later this month. So be on the lookout for those. Subscribe so you can see more videos from me and turn on the notifications so you can be here every single time I post a video because usually I'm in the comments during the first hour replying and talking and hearting all your comments. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!